Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. My house was the only house on a dirt road approximately three-tenths of a mile from the nearest hard road. As I was walking home early one evening, I heard heavy-sounding footsteps on dried leaves in the woods along the dirt road. I stopped. It stopped. I walked. It walked. This happened several times before, and I ran out of there. A few years later, my brother, a friend, and I were about to do a little fishing in the creek. We took our fishing rods and coolers to the creek, and I made a trip back to the car for tackle boxes. That's when I started hearing those heavy footsteps on the dried leaves again. At first, I paid it no attention, and then the walking stopped. I looked at where the sounds came from and saw this very tall creature looking at me from about 75 yards away. I still see him pushing a tree away from his face with his left hand. And when I hollered for my brother and friend to come look at this thing, it ran into the wood. I later told my mother about this. She asked me if I remember the couple who had parked in the woods a few years back that had a problem and came to the house. She told me they saw the same thing. My father told me he saw something like that at the end of our property at the old cattle gap, watching him work in his garden. When he looked up, it ran away. My brother and friend say I was seeing things. Both times I experienced this, it was early evening. My first experience was in a pine forest. The second time, and when I actually saw it, the area was densely wooded, marshy, and along a creek. On to the next one. This happened in Charlotte County in Florida. Three youth had two sightings of a skunky, the local name for a Bigfoot, in one night. The creature was seven feet tall with long reddish-brown hair and stood up and growled at the youth. The first sighting was at 9 p.m. and the second at midnight. After the three youth told the sheriff's department that they had seen a hairy humanoid twice in one night, Deputy Carl Williams drove to the area of the sighting just after midnight and at a small pond caught a big reddish brown haired creature in his headlight. The big hunched over animal was drinking. It had long brown hair but was not a bear. When spotted, it lumbered off into the wood. On to the next one. My encounter occurred at approximately 2 a.m. while driving on Taylor Road in Volusia County in Florida, just south of Daytona Beach. At that time, this area was quite rural and Taylor Road was only two lanes. The only major building on that road then, other than a few private homes, was my high school, Spruce Creek, which had opened the previous year. Today, I believe Taylor Road is a six-lane roadway and quite congested, and the area is far from rural anymore. Shortly after turning onto Taylor Road from Tomoka Farms Road, I think, the headlights of the car I was riding in lit up a figure on the side of the roadway which caught my eye. We were traveling quite slowly at the time, and from the moment I first spotted the figure, my eyes didn't leave it. The closer we got to the figure, the slower we went. After realizing it was not a person, I had trouble comprehending exactly what I was seeing. But what I did see was a creature squatted on the side of the road, just at the edge of the roadway. It was squatted and picking something from the ground and placing what it was picking in its other hand folded up against its body. 
From time to time, it would taste or smell what it was picking. When the creature realized we were closely approaching, it lifted its head and looked directly at me. Our eyes locked and didn't break until we decided to move it and get out of there. The creature didn't look angry or frightened. It looked more quizzical than anything else. It didn't attempt to move, walk, or run away. I would estimate that if standing, the creature would have stood approximately seven to seven and a half feet tall and weighed between 400 and 500 pounds. Although all of its hair may have made it look heavier than it was, it was covered with long, somewhat wavy and matted Irish setter red colored hair. The hair on its chest wasn't as thick and long as on the rest of its body. Hair covered the face, but the hair on the face was short. No hair covered the palms of the hand. It had fingers and, from what I could see, toes as well. The head was round and the top of the head had long hair like on other parts of the body. After realizing what we were looking at, we quickly drove away. I think more confused than anything else. I'm certain this couldn't have been a person. It was too real and too large. After getting home, I thought about calling somebody, but was afraid if I reported it, someone might hurt or kill whatever it was. I'm not sure if anybody that I told believed me anyways. I have never forgotten one thing about this experience, and my memory of this creature is vivid in my mind as if it happened yesterday. Coincidentally, the property where I saw what I'm sure was a skunk ape was a place where my best friend and I regularly rode horses. But we never saw anything before or after this sighting out of the ordinary. I spoke to the man who owned the property and the only odd thing he could report was that he had a terrible time that summer with something or someone stealing his vegetables from his garden. So that's my story. On to the next one. This happened in Holmes County in Florida. My brother had built a hut or a fort in the woods right at the edge of the woods by our home. That morning, my little sister, who was five, and I, who was nine, went out to the hut. It was just after daybreak. The first thing we noticed was a bad smell. It was awful, very foul. We then heard something large walking through the woods. At this point, I grabbed my sister and ran into the gully behind the hut to hide. After we were in the gully, we heard a growling sound. It would growl for a few minutes and then stop and then growled one more time. Then we saw this huge thing standing at the edge of the wood. It was very tall and broad. It was standing there on two legs with a human-like shape. It had hair that was brownish red in color. This was not a bear. It was standing approximately 50 to 70 feet from us. The trees and bushes were obscuring it a small amount. It walked up to within a few feet of the hut, then turned and walked away. We were terrified. After it left, we ran home. I remember a very bad smell and a very distinctive noise that it was making. I grew up in the woods and I have never heard anything like that before. I was very young myself, but... That was an experience I will never forget as long as I live. It was just me and my baby sister. I have asked her many times if she remembers anything, but she was too young. When I became old enough to investigate, I searched and read everything I could get my hands on. It wasn't long when I discovered that a preacher around that very same time and place had a Bigfoot Chase's car. It was not something in your daily conversation back then, so I didn't really tell a lot of people. It was in the early morning hours. It was just beginning to get really hot. It was your usual summer morning in Florida. It happened behind the two-story house 
that I grew up in as a kid. The area back then was wooded fairly well, and there was also a pond back there. There was a lot of farmland around. On to the next one. At Delray Beach, a hairy humanoid was seen by a security guard at about 1 a.m. The creature was seven feet tall and was drinking water from a lake at the second tee. The creature was covered in long, black, shaggy hair and had very wide shoulders. When the pickup truck's headlight were shined onto it, the creature looked around and then lumbered slowly into some dense woods. The creature stank and locally was called the skunk ape. On to the next one. At Apopka in Orange County in Florida, Donnie Hall, a security guard, was reported to have been attacked and scratched by a Bigfoot that was 10 feet tall and which tried to break down a door. The creature had a chest full of reddish gray fur and it had small ears. The man beast had attacked the security guard, ripping off his shirt. Donnie had fired his gun at close range at the creature and as usual, in these cases, missed. Tracks of the man beast were found in John's nursery in Apopka. On to the next one. In Ocala National Forest in Marion County in Florida, a 67-year-old Baptist minister, the Reverend S. L. Whatley, pastor of the Fort McCoy Baptist Church, was cutting wood at about 2 p.m., and was having trouble with his chainsaw. He decided to head home and then became aware that something was watching him from 300 to 400 yards away. It was a hairy, ape-like creature standing in the palmetto bushes and was seven to eight feet tall. It had a chocolate-covered face that was clear of hair and a flat nose and large breasts. Thinking to attack the creature, the reverend took an axe from his truck, but on looking up again, noticed that it was gone. On to the next one. We lived in a rural area of central Florida that was mostly pine forest. There were a few hundred acres of derelict citrus groves nearby, as well as a cypress swamp to the north and east of the pine forest. The area we lived in was roughly four square miles between paved roads. But to the north, east, and west, beyond the area I'm describing, there were additional substantial areas of pine forest, palmetto scrub, and dense cypress swamp. Our house was situated on the crest of a hill, or at least what passes for a hill in that part of Florida. It was about eight one night and I was home alone with my father. My parents were separated, and my father would occasionally come stay with me when my mother and siblings were out. During the late fall and winter months, it was our custom to shoot rabbits at night. Our house was roughly square, with small floodlights on each corner of the house that would illuminate our small yard area, and the edge of the tree line out back to the north and west. We would typically wait until it was fully dark before we would go out. We would load our shotgun in the house, get our flashlights ready, and on occasion, my father would wear a headlamp, or as he called it, a one-eyed dog. We would leave the corner floodlights of the house off until we were ready. Then we would turn the light on and quickly step out the back door. Most of the time, there would be a rabbit or two nibbling the grass at the border between our poorly kept lawn and the edge of the forest. Not a difficult shot with a shotgun and at just under 30 yards. On this particular night, it was my father's turn to shoot. I held a large flashlight. He held a Stevens 12 gauge side by side double barrel and wore a less than powerful headlamp. As we flipped the lights on and emerged from the back door, he stepped to the right and panned east toward an old pear tree at the edge of the grass. I turned west toward the northwest corner of our yard, where there was a clothesline and an old bench my grandfather had made. On the edge of our yard, 
just six or eight feet from the tree line was a large crouched figure. When I first saw the figure, it was reasonably well lit from the floodlight on the house and from the upper edge of my flashlight beam. But my first glimpse of the creature, it was already moving, springing up from a crouch to a fully erect bipedal stance while simultaneously rotating away from me, turning to the creature's right. As there was motion when I first saw it, I was not able to get any meaningful look at its face. But as it turned, I saw the creature with very good clarity from a distance of just under 30 yards. It was not a gigantic creature. It was almost the same height as my father, who was five foot ten, perhaps an inch or two shorter than he was. Most of my view of the creature was from the back after it had turned and started moving away. The creature was clearly much stockier than a man with very large shoulders and not very much narrowing noticeable at the waist. Its upper legs were thick and powerful looking. It was covered in fur of medium length, not shaggy or super long, but long enough to obscure the details of most muscle tone. The fur was longer than that of a deer, yet not quite as long or as deep or dark as a bear. The fur was not especially dark and was certainly not black. The flashlight we had back then made everything look a little bit lighter and a little bit more bluish purple than it really was, which I had previously observed many times when examining close up the rabbits that we had shot. The creature took three or four very distinct strides before its lower body became obscured from view by some undergrowth. Its shoulders and head were visible for perhaps for two or three strides, and then nothing could be seen because of pine branches and the fact the creature moved beyond the area illuminated by the floodlight in the house. I never shone my flashlight directly on it, as I was stunned to the point of both immobility and speechlessness as soon as I saw it. I will never forget the distinct look of the creature from behind. It had some kind of deformity. Its head was tilted quite far down on the left side, with that side of its head at an awkward angle to its shoulder. It was like the muscles or tendons in the left side of its neck had been injured and were now contracted a bit and shorter than the muscles on the right side. It was not a temporary position or part of the creature's sudden movement. That awkward, left-leaning head position was maintained even as the creature ran away. I do not recall any vocalizations or any specific smell. I do remember the sound of twigs snapping and leaves and pine needles crunching very loudly as the creature moved away. The sound of it moving through the forest and undergrowth was quite distinct and had a cadence that no other local creature made. The sound of the creature running stopped when the creature reached a small clearing about 70 yards into the wood. Or, I assume, that is why the sound of its exit stopped based on its direction. My father, who was with me, saw nothing although he heard the creature's exit. He was facing about 160 degrees, opposite to where I was facing, and the entire incident lasted perhaps only three or four seconds. My father asked me what was going on, and I was absolutely and very literally speechless. I could not speak. I simply pointed and stood there frozen. He took me in the house and tried to get me to calm down, but it was more than five minutes before I could speak. I remember feeling fear, but I think my physical reaction was actually a mild form of shock. What I saw was so unbelievable, so unexpected, and so close, I suspected my physical reaction would not have been any different than if I had seen a headless horseman. After about 10 minutes, I had recounted what I saw two or three times to my father, who was clearly in disbelief, but quite moved by my physical reaction. At about the same time, we heard a loud but distant barking howling and baying from our closest neighbor's hunting dog, which he kept in a large outdoor kennel 
at his home about one mile through the forest from our home. We would occasionally hear the dogs bark at night, but never like this. I could see the look on my dad's face change from disbelief to some level of fear as the dogs made the most agitated sounds we had ever heard. And this we never, ever heard again. We tried to find the phone number for our neighbor with the dog, but we didn't know where my mom kept it. After about 20 minutes, the dogs settled down a bit, although they continued to bark without the same level of agitation. After another 10 or 15 minutes, my father suggested that we go investigate the area where I saw the creature enter the woods. I thought this was a really bad idea and wanted no part of it. But my father insisted there was some explanation for what I had seen and that I would feel better once I had things cleared up in my mind. My mind was not unclear and I was quite certain of what I had seen, although I could not explain it and had no name for it. Eventually, we went outside, this time with both of us carrying shotguns. I refused to step away from the back door, but my father slowly ventured over to the area about 30 yards away and looked at the ground and the brush line. He entered the brush line where I indicated and went perhaps two or three more steps and bent down again. I kept my shotgun pointed in his general direction, but not directly at him. After just a few seconds, my father came hurriedly back and said we needed to get in the house. He was clearly shaken, and my construction worker, outdoorsman, Purple Heart Awarded Father was afraid of nothing. My father called the local sheriff's office, but when he started to explain things, he did not know what to say. He explained that I had seen something and was scared to the point of being speechless. He told the sheriff about the neighbor's dogs, but the more he spoke, the less he said about the specifics of what happened. The more frustrated he became. He finally told the sheriff, never mind, I'm sure it was nothing. He did not give me any meaningful details of what he saw, but simply explains that something big clearly went through there in a big hurry. Both my father and I knew the woods as well, and we hunted all the time, spending hundreds of hours a year in these woods. I had never seen anything like this creature before, and I never saw anything like it ever again. I never saw any large animal tracks in that part of central Florida that I could not easily identify, and I never saw any scat that I could not identify. The creature appeared to have either an old injury to the left side of its neck or perhaps a birth defect. A few months after the incident, my father brought home the newspaper, the St. Pete Independent, Clearwater Sun, or perhaps the Tampa Tribune, I don't remember, but in it reported a Bigfoot sighting in an area that was about 40 miles from us. Over the next two months or so, there were several sightings that made the paper. It was around 8 p.m., dark outside, but the creature was illuminated in floodlight and partially illuminated by a flashlight. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!